Hello YouTube, Adopted Mike here, and this is the MSI Big Bang X Power 2 motherboard, obviously from MSI. This is an X79 chipset motherboard, so it's the Socket 2011. This is, I believe at the time of this video, this is the highest uh, MSI 2011 board that there is. They're most feature rich, um, probably their most expensive as well too, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that that is the case on this board. So we'll start out here at the pull the camera there we go. Let's start right here at the top. We've got Windows 8 compatible SLI, Crossfire, Windows 7, Core i7, uh, Intel, and the aforementioned X79 chipset. We've got an editor's choice there. I'll we'll take a look at the box itself. It opens up here to get a quick look at the motherboard and then over here we have some of the uh, features Let's see if I can try to get this in frame on the camera here but uh, yeah so here's what we've got some of the features here extreme components extreme power design extreme overclocking and on the side here, if we can get it to zoom, there's some specifications. And then on the back is another look at the motherboard there. Um, many people probably recognize this is the one with the uh, bullets, the military class, the little minigun up there. Kind of not really my favorite, but um, yeah, I was more interested in the features of the board. Click BIOS, Supercharger, there we've got USB 3.0 SATA 6, Instant Overclocking, there's a look at the rear I.O. and some of the other features of the board. So there we go. we've got 8 DIMM slots for 128 gigabytes max, there's dual gigabit LAN, we've got 4 PCI Express 3.0 and 3 PCI Express 2.0 by 16 so this is an Excel ATX motherboard to get all that on here just so everybody understands. We've got Crossfire and SLI we've got 8 channel audio with Sound Blaster XFI on the motherboard and then we have 4 SATA 3 gig 2 SATA 6 gig 4 more SATA 6 gig from an AS Media controller we've got 2 Firewire got 6 USB 3 and 10 USB 2 so yeah there's a lot going on on this board let's kind of take a, another shot up here we got super pipe so they're claiming 50 degrees Celsius lower temperature and it's the world's thickest 8 millimeter heat pipe so not quite sure how you can have the thickest 8 millimeter heat pipe it'd still be 8 millimeters so it's 60% thicker and 90% better cooling efficiency. OC Genie 2, and then we talked about before the Sound Blaster XFI MV2. So anyway, let's get in this box and um, we'll take a look at what's inside. Okay, for starters here, we have the motherboard in its own little box. Let's take a look at all the junk that comes with it. Okay, so we have this quick guide, and I'm going to assume it must be kind of a, yep, it's kind of a fold-out poster here, pointing to everything and describing it. And we have an overclocking guide as well, too, and this one is... It folds out this way. That's kind of handy. We've got a rear I.O. shield and nothing fancy. It's not padded or anything like that, but at least it is different color than silver. Okay, now starting start over here, we have a rear I.O. Uh, USB 3.0. We have this bunch of cables. Here is a eSATA, two eSATAs and a Molex power out. 
And then we have the cables that go with it. There is the Molex power out splitter and it splits it into two SATA connections. And then we have an eSATA data cable here as well too. Although, kind of funny they give you the Molex to two SATA but only one eSATA cable and two ports, but eh, whatever. Better than nothing. Then we have some SATA 6 gigabit second cables. There, these both are uh, uh, straight edge to right angles, both of them in there. And we have another one that is both of them straight edge to right angle. Then we have another one that's straight edge to right angle. And then another one that's straight edge to right angle. So there's eight total of these. So that's a pretty good start. And they all are six gig. And we've got a assortment of SLI cables over here. Let's see if we get them all. Okay, so we've got two that are shorter and then two, oh excuse me, oh this is a crossfire here and this is an SLI so we have interestingly enough they included a crossfire in here when most um, AMD cards do come with that and then so here we go with the SLI so we have three SLIs to support the quad SLI. It would be nicer to have the hard ones, but for the arrangement of all the PCI Express slots on the board, maybe it was harder for them to have, uh, you know, SLI, tri-SLI, and quad SLI in all the different configurations possible with the seven PCI Express slots. So then we have, these must be for uh, voltage reading. Oh yeah, we've got the vol voltage reading uh, point extensions. And then we have, oh I like these, little headers that go into the motherboard to help you uh, wire your front panel connectors there outside and then you can plug it into it. So if you can't see, if your case is too small and you can't see the standoff on the motherboard, boom, there you go. Especially in a motherboard of this size as well too, it's going to take a certain case to fit it in and it's going to probably fill that case up. So now we have a quick install guide. And then we have a certificate of quality and stability. So we have the software and application book and it is entirely in English. Then we have the user guide for the motherboard and it is also entirely in English. So that we also have a driver disc, although I did not see a case badge yet. But it's always best to check online, uh, make sure there's no newer drivers out. And that looks like it will round out what's in the accessories box. So now we will move on to the motherboard itself. Yeah, let me bring my camera in a little bit. Okay, so let's flip up the protective case and I noticed there is no anti-static bag or anything like that which is I guess it's okay I would have kind of expected something a little different from a three and three hundred and something dollar motherboard so like I said before this is an XL ATX board so this will not fit in all cases it is wider like an EATX and it is longer here to accommodate uh, additional graphics cards. Okay, so let's get started anyway. At the bottom, like I typically do, we have the front panel audio, and then we have a Firewire connector there. Then we have this JD LED 3. So that might be interesting. I need to take a, let me take a look at what that is and I will be right back okay so that port is the voice genie port whatever that is must be an optional accessory then we have PCI Express ceasefire so that will uh, shut off the PCI Express 3.0 slots the four of them that are on this board now we have a direct OC with plus and minus is there and a reset button and then over here we have our JFP speaker um, 
front panel speaker or front panel connectors but this is specifically for the speaker and then we have a system fan that is a four pin We've got an overclock genie in the multi bios button USB 2.0 and then a USB 2.0 here that is always on then we've got the front panel connectors and there is the the uh, if you're using um, liquid nitrogen or other cooling there's a jumper for that and then over here we have a six pin PCI Express power connector there for adding additional power to the PCI Express lanes and we have a USB 3.0 now we move over to the connectivity as far as drives. Uh, total here we have, uh, they're in the, let me see if I can get down here to where I can point. Okay, we have two, four, and six SATA, six gigabit a second, and then these four are SATA three gigabit a second. These are on the X79 controller, and this is on the AS Media controller, those four over there. Moving along, we have some voltage checkpoints, the 24-pin power connector, and there's another fan header in there hiding. I don't think I missed a fan header over here yet. Okay, I think we're doing well so far. Then we have the eight dim slots. Here are four of them here. We've got the power button in an odd location up top here. And then we have a dip switch jumper there coming around let's back off a little bit we have the mini gun that doubles as a heat sink I can see how that would work with a heat pump going down and then across like so it's okay looking but it's not my favorite thing we've got um, two uh, eight pin CPU power connectors and then we have a CPU fan that is a four pin there fan header. Got the CPU socket. Then up top we have the other four dims to make the eight. Let's see, it's spinning around this way. It's hard to get this board in frame, some of the shots. There's a system fan header four, that's a four pin. And, and then a system fan header five, that is a four pin. So all of that I've seen, oh, there's another one right up there. There's number three. Number three is right there, a system fan header, and that is a four pin as well. So all of the fan headers on here are all four pin fan headers, so that is actually kind of nice. And then we have a multi BIOS switch here that I noticed right there above the super pipe. And we've got this bullet looking heat sink that ties in that ties together with the uh, thickest 8 millimeter heat pipe in the world as they claim so that's a good look at the board there's a lot going on there's the XFI chipset too by the way while I'm down there that's a good look at the layout of the board again too we'll do a quick rundown so we'll get to PCI Express slots so we have 3.0, 3.0, 3.0 and 3.0 and then we have 2.0, 2.0, 2.0 to make the 7 total. And then, let's see if I'm missing anything so far here. I guess we missed this little LED status light. Um, a lot of boards have those nowadays, nothing special there. But I do like, one thing I want to point out, I do like how this is a right angle and this is a right angle as well too. I like those. I like the SATA ports right angles. It makes everything a lot easier to hide because it just plugs in and then I can tuck it away under the motherboard or around something like that rather than having sometimes I've seen you know that PCI Express power connector it might be a Molex on some of them they like have it right up here and then you gotta run this Molex wire into an area over here and it just kinda looks unsightly but when it's down here and you could just plug into it it really makes a nice clean build I mean, one of these days, I don't know, I mean, no, even these would be kind of nice. The USB 2.0s would be kind of nice to be at right angles in some of the builds as well, too. Just to, just to hide some of that cable clutter. There's always so much cable clutter, especially on a full-featured board like this. I mean, you're already going to be power graphics cards. If you do water cooling, you're going to have a lot of hoses going on and stuff. It's just, 
anything we can do to get rid of some of the cable clutter is great and even up here I, I, it would be a lot harder to do the CPU power because a lot of times there's fans and stuff so you do have to hit there but at least it's easily hideable up here is out of the way but yeah if any kind of power connectors are in this area like some of them PCI Express power it just makes it a hell of a lot harder to uh, to hide so now let's take a look at the rear I.O. real quickly I wanted to point out I, the angle I'm looking at I can tell that not all of these PCI Express 16 slots are wired for by 16 like I can tell that's only wired to there wired to there so we've got an 8 and an 8 and an 8 and an 8 and an 8 max so the two 16s that are um, excuse me that are 3.0's 16's are right here everything else is an 8 now I'm gonna read out of the motherboard because this becomes an 8 if this one is populated so I'm gonna read exactly how this is working here to because um, obviously you're not gonna get 16 times on all of seven slots some of them are going to be reduced there is a switching chip but um, uh, we'll go we'll go over exactly what the max we're looking at for each one of these so like I said before we have uh, the PCI Express 3.0 is this one this one this one and then this one here so what we're looking at is we're, this one is definitely a 16 this one is definitely a 16 as well too so you have these two 16s now if 3 is populated then five, so we'll go, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll just refer to them as that instead of trying to distinguish what generation they are. But if if slot one is populated, slot five in, is populated. That is sixteen and sixteen. Now if slot three is populated, then it's eight and eight. So slot three will kick this one down to a by eight, which isn't horrible on 3.0. That's still a hell of a lot of bandwidth currently nothing uses even by eights so so we have um, yeah so anyway we got two 16s if third one's populated uh, one is 16 five will be eight and then um, seven is a by eight and then we go to the the even ones two four and six two four and six are they're all 2.0 slots like we talked about before and PCI 2, 4, and 6 are only by one speed which I think is interesting because they're clearly wired to by 8 but it must not when they're when they're all f interesting yeah so this is uh, interestingly enough these are no, these are only wired to by they can only handle by one. Hmm, I'm not quite understanding how that works, but basically, as I'm reading it, is right here. One, three, five, and seven. One is sixteen. Five is sixteen when three is empty, or eight when three is installed, and seven is a by eight. And then we have PCI 2.0. We got two, four, and six. PCI 2, 4, and six support up to PCI. PCIe 2.0 by one speed, which makes me wonder why they didn't just, or why they're wired to eight. Perhaps it's something uh, that they're leaving open, maybe for a BIOS update or a new uh, i7 chip that maybe will have more PCI Express lanes, and at that point, then maybe you can utilize uh, eight in the t in the 2.0 slots or in the even numbered slots actually is probably better so maybe they're wired to 8 but right now Intel CPU only supports by one maybe there's just not enough lanes I mean because if you had 16 8 8 and 8 that's 16 32 40 41 42 43 you'd have 43 lanes of PCI Express if you were able to actually populate all of them so I guess that's probably why you just it needs to have more lanes before it would work that way so I wanted to point that out before I went any further in the board it is a little deceiving so as long as you keep that in mind and if you're only gonna run two cards you definitely would want to well not that it matters hugely but ideally if you're gonna run two high bandwidth cards if you hit these two slots leaving this one empty would be your best uh, positioning there so now we will move on to the rear I.O. 
Okay, so rear I.O. there, we've got a combo PS2 port. Underneath it we have two USB 2.0 ports. And then we have a little handy dandy CMOS reset switch, which is recessed, and I like that. It's definitely hard to hit, so I like that. You really got to want to uh, press that in, so that's good. We've got an optical and a, sp and a uh, um, coaxial uh, audio out. We got the FireWire up there, which nobody really uses, but it's probably nice to have. We've got four more USB 2.0 ports there. We've got two gigabit Ethernets, which is awesome. I'm going to actually run both of those back to the switch to see if we can uh, team them up together. Then we've got four USB 3.0 ports down there, and then the uh, Sound Blaster XFI opt or excuse me, Sound Blaster XFI audio out. So wow, that is a heck of a motherboard, and I'm looking forward to the build with this. Um, hopefully, I'll have time. I will actually do a video build of this to show you guys, and then we can take a look at what it's capable of. So anyway, um, you know, that wraps it up for this MSI Big Bang X Power 2 motherboard based on the X79 chipset. And as always, everyone, thank you for watching.